baby. Just another nightmare. Everything's fine. Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up. My name's Mark Walker and to another of our performance reviews. If you like these types of videos, do let me know in the comments and tick all the buttons so the algorithm is pleased. Well, the action adventure game Alan Wake originally released all the way back in 2010. But guess what? The remastered edition just dropped on Nintendo Switch. At its launch, I absolutely loved this game, despite some slightly iffy writing and some cliche, it still managed to deliver something that felt like the light-hearted equivalent of Silent Hill, mixed with a light and dark mechanic that tasked the player with balance in their batteries as well as their bullets. With the sequel just around the corner, I believe scheduled for 2023, it's not a huge surprise they want to get the game back into the public's attention. As always, before you buy, it might be worth you knowing how it performs on the Nintendo Switch, the frame rates, the download size, the price, and a few quirky issues that I think you might want to know about. Exactly one year after the original release of the remaster in October 2021, is it a pretty picture when we shine a light on the Switch port or does it evaporate into dust? Well, let's find out. Alan Wake Remastered is launching with a 20% discount on Nintendo Switch. That takes its price down to £19.99 or your regional equivalent, and that's until the 9th of November, at which point it will return to its base price of £24.99. This one carries a reasonably hefty download size of 13.2 gigs, but at least it's not a cloud version. What are you getting for your money? Well, obviously you're getting the remastered version of the game, but you're also getting two story expansion packs, The Signal and The Writer. If you're interested, the remastered version has had better cutscenes, improved visuals overall, and elsewhere ran a lot better. Eesh. Let's jump straight into performance. Published by Epic Games and developed by Remedy, the port has been worked on by D3T, based in a town called Runcorn here in Blighty. Initially, it looks like the game targets 30 frames per second, but oh dear, the frame rate is not stable at all, or at least not always. Stick around because there's some interesting things to talk about. They seem to have really struggled with the lighting mechanics. That dynamic lighting has a real impact on performance at times. At other times though, it seems okay. There is heavy use of motion blur, which can trick frame rate software into thinking it's running at a higher rate. So there is that to consider. But even so, unfortunately in docked mode, it simply cannot maintain its frame rate nearly enough and will certainly need a patch. When we move between a few different areas, some certainly fare better than others. But what I would normally expect to see would be the interior environments having almost no issues and the exterior being the problematic ones. It's so sporadic as to when it's good and when it's bad that it feels more like an underlying bug or other issue rather than purely a performance one. Especially as within the space of five meters, the game can go from running very well to running terribly. In fact, I saw as low as 12 frames per second at one point. I know this might make it sound like a terrible port, but I don't think it is. And here's where the unusual issues continue. When you're playing in handheld mode, you won't notice nearly as many issues. While performance still has stutters, even when stood in the same areas, the frame pacing is much more smooth. This basically means that the same scene can feel entirely different whether you're playing in docked or handheld. Although rudimentary, you can see in this side-by-side -side comparison that the left-hand image in docked has real frame pacing issues, while the right is certainly improved, if not perfect. What it's meant so far in the first three hours of the game is that if you're playing in handheld, it's actually reasonably enjoyable. But if you're playing in docked, you will be on a roller coaster of frame rates, and if that has an effect on you in terms of motion sickness, well, you might want to wait until a patch. D3T have done a few interesting things in terms of visual trickery, and similar to the release of Hellblade, it looks like they've gone for pre rendered cutscenes. That is to say, they've taken the in engine cutscenes, turned them into video, and then that's played for the cutscene moments. Now, this may have been the case back on other consoles, but I would say it's more likely that they were rendered with in engine assets. Either way, though, it's made more stark by the shift between in-game gameplay and those cutscene transitions. The visual quality difference is quite noticeable. And that takes us nicely then onto the overall visual and aesthetic quality. Now on the one hand, there are moments where you're stood indoors, the lighting's not overly impressive, and the anastropic filtering is quite low, meaning that the textures on the floor, etc., look a little blurry. But on the other, when the lighting's working correctly, it can actually look pretty decent. Reduction in quality is to be expected, but it's just inconsistent. Perhaps it's the nature of the game that the darker areas obviously look a little better. 
darker textures always look more detailed to the human eye, as opposed to their daylight counterparts. There's also quite a bit of aliasing evident in the scenes, which is shown with jaggy lines in the background, and an overall rougher aesthetic around the character themselves. For all that I've said, I would still rather a native version on Nintendo Switch like this that only costs 20 quid than any number of cloud versions. I think it will only take one or two patches for them to get this run in a consistent frame rate. And when you're playing in handheld on the Switch OLED, it actually looks much better. It's certainly the way to go at the moment. And as I say, due to the nature of the game anyway, you're in darkness so often that visual quality isn't the be all and end all. It's really that performance that they need to get dialed in. Initial load times are anywhere in the region of 20 to 30 seconds. Certainly not speedy, but not as bad as it could have been. How about the controls then? Well, the Switch version features customizable axis for both X and Y, sensitivity toggles. There is a difficulty option here between easy, medium and hard, or easy, medium and nightmare and there are video commentaries if you want to go that way, featuring both the original game commentary as well as the remaster. And then we have audio fidelity. So far, the sound has been excellent. Now, I use my Nintendo Switch with a surround sound system, and although many games don't natively support it, there does seem to be some good surround emulation. When I was being chased, I could hear the screams and noises of horror behind me. And if you've watched the channel for more than five minutes, you'll know that I do not enjoy horror games in general, although for some reason this one didn't bother me too much. But acoustically speaking, the remaster is really good on Switch. I didn't notice any down sampling, and the spatial audio works really nicely. If you've never played Alan Wake before, I do highly recommend it. £19.99 is just on the edge of impulse buy. If you're looking for a perfect experience, then the Switch is not the way for it, at least not at the moment. But if you're a handheld player and you don't mind a few performance issues, it's at least playable in that mode. Anyone with docked, maybe wait for that patch and keep your eyes on the top pin comment or we'll add it to an all patched up episode. Please do leave any comments down below. Let me know any questions that you have about the release and I'll do my very best to answer them. What it doesn't have is a physical copy, but I'm sure someone will get their hands on it in a limited run or similar. But there is a lot of value for money here in terms of the amount of content you're getting for that price, particularly if it's the first time you've ever played. The general premise then sees you following the writer Alan Wake who's taking a vacation as he's suffering from writer's block. Something takes place and he finds himself alone and searching for a missing loved one. It is an action game, so despite its appearances, you'll have a number of weapons, you'll aim by holding the left stick, and that's also its interesting light mechanic, whereby you can shine your torch onto enemies, and if you do this for long enough, you'll then be able to take them out with a few shots of the pistol. In terms of gameplay design, it was a little formulaic. You essentially moved from light to light, with the occasional switch, which usually required the pressing of a button in time with an on-screen prompt, and there are also boss fights in here. What made it so tense though is that you're constantly being pursued with creatures materializing from the shadows and combined with the excellent acoustics it was just creepy the whole game's narrated by alan himself and it pulls it off everything comes together in terms of gameplay despite nothing particularly excelling so it is an experience worth it if you're a fan of this genre just heed the warnings in this video and wait for a patch if you need to but thanks to all of you that enjoy the content hopefully this was useful if it was hit the like button and all of that stuff and if you want to save 10 percent on this game you can use code switch up over at switchup.gg to get your eShop credit and we get a tiny little kickback from Nintendo. As always, thanks to our Patreons and our members as well. I think we've got six members now for the win. And as always, for all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!